Today, I want to talk about uh, uh, China's youth, uh, new generations uh, grow up in a year of the great social change and uh, shared uh, very different values and behaviors from older generations. As China's uh, influence on the global economy and the world community grows, yes. it has become even more important to understand distinct uh, characteristics and the views of China's youth who will increasingly shape the country's trajectory. China's millionaires and uh, younger age cohorts were born after the beginning of uh, reform and uh, opening up. Uh, they are called the uh, children of the reform and the opening up. Uh, I guess you heard something about uh, chi China's reform and opening up. The China began its reform and opening up in the late 1970s uh, from the communist uh, planned economy to the socialist uh, market economy. Since then, China has experienced significant social economic change. Younger generations have uh, arguably uh, witnessed great social economic and democratic changes than uh, previous generation. They have not only been uh, integral participants in China's rapid economic rise but also have been uh, distinctive engaged in evolving family planning policies, the largest uh, domestic uh, rural to urban migration in Chinese history, the opening uh, of extensive education opportunities abroad and the arrival of the digital year. This makes them a very unique generation. So my talk today is about the uh, impact of the uh, reform and the opening up on Chinese youth and uh, how to cast their generational uh, characteristics. China's new generations who born during 1980s, 1990s, and the 2000s. The media called them the post 1980s generation, the post 1990s generation, and the post 2000s generation. They have grown up in the year of the reform and the opening up, and influenced by a series of significant historical events in the aftermath of the reform and the opening up. The lifespan of this generation has been intertwined with the significant social changes, such as uh, faster economic growth, one-child policy, education expansion, the rise of the internet, a marketization, industrialization, urbanization, and a globalization. These changes have greatly affected their living circumstances and opportunities, shaping generational characteristics uh, while uh, widening the intergenerational gap between them and the previous generation. The most uh, common labor for China's new generations is the hungry children or single children. They grew up in the economical perspective, uh, prosperity, and enjoy love from their parents and grandparents. As a major historical event in China, the one child policy has shaped the generational characteristics of youth. This policy uh, combined uh, with countries' rapid economic growth has huge impacts on the life course of new generations. 
the reform and the opening up has led to decades of uh, rapid economic growth in the country, as well as uh, substantial improvement of average income and the living conditions. Uh, about 88% of the Chinese people lived in poverty in the beginning of uh, 1980s when the reform began. More than three decades later, in 2000, uh, 21, now China has eliminated absolute poverty and lifted 770 million people out of poverty, contributing more than 70% to global poverty reduction. The average disposal income in the country increased by uh, 22.8 times from 1978 to 2017. It is in this period of uh, dramatic transformations that China's new generations went through their adolescence. Uh, these two figures in the World Inequality Report are released by a World Inequality Label uh, showed a great change of income of Chinese people over the past decades. The left uh, uh, figures uh, shows uh, the income uh, of the people uh, from uh, different countries and the regions in global income distribution in 1990. And then the uh, right figure uh, is in uh, uh, it, it, it is in the, uh, uh, in the two, uh, uh, 2016. Uh, the horizontal, this uh, horizontal uh, axis uh, uh, refers to the uh, income uh, from the lowest income to the highest income. The uh, vertical axis refers to the percentage of the people uh, from different countries and uh, different uh, the, the regions in the global income distribution. So you may say in 1990s, uh, the most poorest people from the two countries, the red is the China, yellow is the India. So uh, in 1990s, uh, about 40% uh, uh, of the poor people uh, are Chinese and about 30% uh, uh, of poor people are Indians. And uh, the, the rich people, uh, most uh, rich people from the US and uh, 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 Canada and uh, Europe, and uh, uh, the, that is the Middle uh, East and the Latin America. Very few Chinese uh, are the rich people. But uh, in 2000, uh, 2016, the picture uh, changed. So you may see the Chinese, uh, they, uh, a lot of Chinese, uh, their income ranks in the, in the middle income. And some uh, Chinese join the rich uh, group. Uh, so that um, showed the, the, the Chinese uh, the, uh, income increased uh, very uh, uh, quickly. At the same time, the one child policy was implemented in the beginning of reform and the opening up. One child policy refers to a policy implemented by the Chinese government in 1982 that required one couple has one child. Uh, you know, Chinese families traditionally tended to have many children, people like a large family, especially uh, families in the rural areas. Uh, that resulted the population increased very fast. Uh, China has become the world's most popular country. In order to control uh, growth of population, the government implemented one-child policy. 
because of this policy, most families in urban areas had one child, and most families in rural areas had two or three children. The policy soon led to phenomena such as small families and uh, declining fertility rates. The proportion of single children has increased substantially. This figure shown a change of proportion of single children and the second born children among uh, different uh, generations. The proportion of uh, single children is uh, uh, lower for the uh, post uh, uh, 60 generation and post uh, 70 generation, only 4% or 6%. The proportion for uh, worse uh, uh, increased after uh, implementation of one child policy, much higher proportion of uh, single children for the younger generation, the 19% uh, for the post 80 generation, and uh, uh, 32% for the uh, post 90 generation. Uh, the proportion is even high for the uh, post-2000 generation. In 2020, the total number of uh, single children in China was about uh, 200 million. Most of single children are from the families uh, of urban areas. At the same time, one-child policy also made a uh, decline of uh, 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 fertility rates in rural areas. So nationwide, uh, single children and uh, the second born children combine to account for uh, 60, uh, 61% for the post-80 uh, generation and 82% of the post-90 generation. Most of uh, new generations from uh, one child uh, uh, generation or second born generation from one child or second born children families. Uh, they have grown up in economic uh, prosperity, enjoy a much high living uh, standard compared to when their parents uh, grow up. So one child policy and the decline of uh, fertility rates in China has uh, significantly altered the family structures and the parenting styles. The rapid economic growth and uh, one-child policy led many uh, prosperous Chinese families to invest more in their children's education. Parents pay more attention to their only children or very few children they have. As a result, the Chinese younger generations enjoy high standard of living and a better uh, nutrition uh, compared to when their parents grow up. The single children phenomenon uh, does not only impact on the physical well-being of the new generation, but also many other aspects of the family and the society. Uh, small families have altered the traditional parent-children relationship and the parenting style. Today's families are uh, characterized by a more equal and uh, intimate parent-children relationship. Parents pay more respect to children's uh, needs and uh, individuality. The transformation of parent-children relationship has reshaped the generational uh, uh, a relationship in the society so that the older generation uh, can no longer uh, 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 doctrinate the youth with their absolute authority. New generations have a great freedom to display their uh, individuality and uh, creativity. The reform and uh, opening up uh, not only had uh, led to an improvement in the physical well-being among the young people, but also their education uh, attainment. The rapid economic growth has greatly benefited the education sector. 
China's new generations uh, grew up when the country went through an unprecedented expansion of education system. The post-80 generation went to college during the rapid expansion of higher education. Uh, the Chinese government launched a policy of higher education expansion in 1999, which made high education more accessible to the uh, young uh, population. In the late 1990s, the gross rate of college enrollment in China was only 6%, or uh, only six of every uh, 100 uh, young people had opportunities to go to the college. But after the implementation of the policy of higher education uh, expansion, the gross rate of uh, college enrollment increased at a surprising pace to uh, 55% uh, in 2020. That means uh, uh, half of young generation may go to the college. At the same time, the post-90 generation received their second education when uh, uh, universalization of nine-year compulsory education and high school education was uh, promoted. Uh, since late 1980, 1990s, the government uh, has been uh, actively promoting the nine-year uh, compulsory education which had been achieved by uh, 2011. Most of uh, young people may go to the high school. Among the post-80 generation, about 86% uh, have completed uh, junior high school and about 48% uh, 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 have completed high school. Uh, these two figures were 96% and 74% uh, for uh, post-90 uh, generation. Among the post-2000 generation, more than 90% go to high schools and uh, nearly 60% go to colleges. So these figures shows the increase in the middle and higher educational attainment as a result of education expansion. This line uh, showed the proportion of people completing higher education among uh, different generations. Uh, it was very low for the post-50 generation and post-60 generation. And the younger generation have much higher proportions going to colleges than older generations. The proportion of people going to the high school shown a similar trend. The post 80s and the post 90 generation have much high proportion than older generation. In the highly competitive labor market, younger generations are more uh, competent than the older generations. Facing the development of the high technology, industrial restructuring, and the emerging of a new economy, young people more capable of learning, understanding, and innovating. Moreover, they are more uh, capable of adopting to changes in dramatic social transformations. All these uh, have earned the new generations um, unprecedented eco position in front of the older generations, which has significantly weakened the traditional hierarchy uh, based on senior or already. Advantage of young people in the labor market are becoming more and more prominent. Uh, today, uh, the age age discrimination privileges in the labor market. And many uh, employers are reluctant to hire male workers over age of uh, uh, 45 and uh, female workers over the age of 35. In many families, children have high income and uh, um, 
higher occupational prestige than their parents. The reform and the opening up led to a shift of the country towards the market economy, which uh, has accelerated the industrialization and the urbanization and uh, has triggered a large scale population migration. Uh, China's uh, new generations grew up in this context. Uh, previously, most people uh, would go to school, work, and uh, form a family in the same place uh, where they were born. However, the marketization, uh, industrialization, and the urbanization combined to cause a dramatic wave of migration. The number of uh, domestic migrants in China has increased substantially from uh, 6.57 uh, million in 1982 uh, to its peak of 247 million in 2015. In other words, uh, one in every six Chinese were uh, migrants in that year. Many young people migrate with their parents or migrate for school and uh, job opportunities. Uh, this table shows that the proportion of migrants uh, in younger generations uh, is uh, significantly higher than older generations. About 45% uh, of young people uh, in uh, urban areas are migrants from uh, other uh, places. In max cities like uh, Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou, about half of the uh, young people are migrants. For China's new generations, migrating with their parents or migrating for education job opportunities has become a common part of their life. Destinations of migra migration are no longer limited to inside the country, but can be another country. In 2016, more than half a million uh, Chinese students uh, were starting abroad. And in the same year, more than 400,000 had returned to China uh, after completing their study abroad. In other words, in less than four decades, the number of Chinese students uh, starting uh, abroad was multiplied by more than 600 times. For China's new generation, migrating uh, not only represents a new life uh, experience, it also expands their personal uh, horizons, creates opportunities for their, their uh, development and uh, triggers their ambitions. So the uh, spirit of hard work and uh, optimism uh, that these uh, young migrants developed has become uh, a driving force behind uh, uh, China's economic miracle. Another level often attached to China new generation is the internet generation. This table uh, shows that internet uh, uh, penetration rate is particularly high for younger uh, generations. The post-80 uh, generation and the post-90 generation are much uh, more active internet users compared to the older generations, for example, in using internet, reading political news online, reading uh, entertainment news online, uh, chatting and uh, making friends and, and, and so on. Uh, the, the younger generation has a much higher uh, proportion than older generation. And, and also, so uh, there is a large gap between the generation in using internet. Obviously, the new generation is, uh, is far more ahead of the previous generations 
when it comes to internet usage and access to the information. The young people are more likely to uh, harness the potential of the uh, emergent uh, internet-based economy for career development and uh, innovation. Against um, the backdrop of information society and the knowledge economy, young people's advantage related to internet are translated into their com uh, competitiveness in the labor market, which accelerates the process of generational uh, replacement in the Chinese society. The post-80 generation has predominated in many fast-growing new economic sectors, including the internet economy, uh, while uh, the post-90 generation has also become a main uh, driving force for innovation in new economy. Uh, these two generations have contributed much of the uh, dynamics of countries' economic development and innovation. The internet also uh, offers young people a platform to develop their unique uh, culture. Uh, traditionally, youth culture was often viewed as uh, deviant, uh, rebelling, uh, discontent, or uh, a grassroots culture in conflict uh, with the mainstream culture. Uh, this is largely due to the marginal position of the youth in the traditional society in which young people were um, passive recipients of discipline and education. In contrast, in the internet year, the youth has come to the center stage of the society, no longer as the passive uh, recipient of education. They become active leaders and agents in the culture and the new technologies. Instead of uh, rebellion against the mainstream culture, they become a driving force behind the culture change. Uh, so uh, in sum, the internet has uh, changed in the position of China's new generation in society. The reform and the opening up uh, not only altered the life chance of the Chinese people, but also reshaped their values and uh, uh, behaviors. The new generations have uh, shared the experience in these major social transformations. Inevitably, their values and the behaviors differ from the older generations. One of the uh, most uh, uh, outstanding generational differences in values and the behaviors uh, in the, uh, contemporary China consists in the consumption uh, values and uh, behaviors. In the past, Chinese families were known for their uh, inclination to uh, 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 sacrifice current spending uh, for uh, precautionary saving, deficit spending unacceptable. However, new generations favors uh, spending first, uh, making money and then repaying debt. Purchasing a uh, residential property with a mortgage is popular among the post-80 generation. Later, it also became the common to buy durable consumer goods such as automobiles with the installment loans. The post-80, uh, 90 generation and the post-2000 uh, generation used the mortgages and uh, installment loans for their daily expenses. According to the panel survey of Chinese university students uh, in 2020, about 88% of college students use e-commerce loans and 22, 23% use mortgages installment loans. 
Four percent use now online uh, erasures alone. Uh, some colleges students uh, commit uh, suicide because they cannot afford the uh, 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 erasures alone. Uh, data, suggest, uh, data suggest that uh, deficit spending is becoming a widespread uh, practice among the, uh, the post-90 uh, generation and the post-2000 generations. So now new generations has become a new favor in consumer uh, markets. So another uh, great change in values of young generation is related to the rise of China in the world. As the new generations grow up, uh, globalization and the rise of China, uh, Chinese economy, are uh, two major historical events uh, that um, uh, uh, cultivate their love for their nation. Now, four decades of reform and opening up uh, converted China from a poor and uh, backward nation to a uh, rapidly developing country with the second largest economy in the world. Uh, used to be uh, marginalized in the world system, China has uh, come to the center of the stage. And the younger generations in China have uh, witnessed this historical process, which has shaped their views of the world and their country. Uh, two events are uh, particularly influ influential. One is uh, China's uh, enjoying uh, WTO in 2001. Another is uh, 2008 uh, Beijing Olympic Games. Uh, the, the post uh, uh, 1980 generation uh, and the job market in uh, condemned with the country uh, rise to the global economy, uh, the power. And the uh, uh, 2008 Beijing Olympic uh, uh, Games was a stage where China uh, suitcase its achievements to the uh, world. So the young people in the post-90 uh, generation uh, not only uh, witness the global influence of the Chinese products as they grew up, uh, the Chinese students, the tourists, the consumers, uh, investors also travel to different parts of the world. As China has become a, a real global uh, power, the large country and the mindset among the young generation is further consolidated. Uh, this, um, in 2016, the panel uh, survey of Chinese university students ask her the, the question, do you feel proud for being a Chinese? And the college students uh, express a strong feeling of proud, very high uh, percentage to students uh, uh, choose them, uh, very proud. Uh, so that's uh, the, the value, the, the change. These uh, major historical events not only impact on the life chance of new generation, uh, but also their generational characters and uh, reinforce a sense of uh, generational identity that um, that distinguished uh, them with the previous uh, generations. However, China's new generations in, is unable to break the uh, constraints of the social structure, the shared um, generational identity fears to eliminate the social economic disparities within the generation. In contrast, marketization has strengthened the Chinese class structure uh, through the international uh, transformation. The new generations is not a homogeneous one. The inequalities based on rural urban division and the social class have led to di diversity and the inequality among the new generations. The rural urban gap has long been a major source of social economic inequality in China. The pe uh, persisting rural urban equality uh, has deep impact on China's new generation. 
leading to disparities between the youth from the urban areas and those from the rural uh, areas regarding the certain standards in which they grew up and that they are opportunities for education and uh, uh, employment. At the same time, the disparities between uh, uh, social classes have uh, widening uh, rapidly in the recent decades. The phenomenon of class reproduction the class you know, reproduction has become increasingly prominent. The uh, single children from the urban middle class families are likely to be uh, admitted to uh, top universities or study abroad and uh, later become uh, successful professionals or uh, business elites. In contrast, uh, children from the poor rural families uh, may fear to compete in the education system and uh, become the migrant workers at an early age. The uh, rural urban uh, inequality is uh, particularly reflected uh, in the education. So uh, these two figures, the lead figures show the percentage of a new uh, generation from the rural families by education. Uh, more than a three quarter uh, new generation come from rural families, but uh, the proportion of uh, the young, uh, these young people uh, with high education uh, is uh, much lower than their average proportion. Uh, they have very high proportion in lower education group. Uh, the red figure shows the percentage of college students from the rural families. Uh, we may say even if the children from the rural families go to the colleges, most of them only go to the, go to the vocational uh, colleges and the last go to the top universities. These uh, inequalities between the youth from the urban and the rural families in labor uh, markets. Uh, today, most of uh, young uh, people from the rural families go to cities for employment. However, because they have not urban hukou, they have been facing dis uh, discrimination in the labor market. Average uh, annual uh, income of youth with urban hukou almost double that of uh, youth uh, without urban hukou. The employment rate of youth without urban hukou is much lower than that of youth with the, uh, urban hukou. About half of rural hukou youth are not working, uh, whereas about uh, over 70% of urban hukou youth are employed. Class uh, difference is another important factor leading to the social economic differentiation of the young generation. Class solidification and uh, involution competition are common words on the internet to describe the dilemma of young generation. Class solidification means a class status is a difficulty to change. It is transmitted from the generation to generation. The people from the low class have few opportunity for upward, up toward the social mobility. Young people are classified as the rich second generation and a poor second generation or an official second generation and the migrant second generation. Uh, involution competition means that um, competition in education and the uh, labor market is so fierce that it requires more and more efforts, but often uh, leads to no results because family background determines one's future. As a result, uh, young people from the <coughs> low classes have to lie down at the bottom of the society. So the Chinese words to describe their situation are 
uh, 躺平佛系, or uh, 打工人. So these losers in educational competition and the labor market uh, try to look for uh, new pursuits and the new opportunities in new fields. Many young people from low classes are devoted to uh, creating subculture and uh, alternative culture on the internet. Increasing numbers of young people have joined the ranks of webcasters and we media, uh, internet writers, and other uh, culture uh, influencers online and offline. Flexible uh, employment and self-employment has become popular uh, among young people. The culture industry is uh, striving with the teenagers and youth as the target group in which young people find new opportunities and uh, feel freedom, uh, autonomy, uh, create appetites and intimate and fun. So the conclusion of my talk is uh, uh, showed in the title of my book, uh, published recently by Brookings Press, uh, the China, China's youth increasing diversity amid uh, pers uh, persistent inequality. Uh, differences between the young generation and their parents are distinct, but uh, uh, diversity among the young generation is more uh, prominent. The rural urban gap and the class disparities have led to persistent inequality in education, employment, and the living conditions. Rising youth culture, as well as internet platforms, have uh, created opportunities for young people from disadvantaged families' backgrounds. That has brought in a diversity, but cannot reduce inequality among the young generation. So that's all my um, thanks for your attention. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Ali. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, in interesting and uh, insightful lecture. And uh, uh, now I am uh, in the chat, we have many uh, interesting questions. Uh, so Professor Li, uh, please uh, look at uh, the chat. Uh, the first question from my, my colleague, uh, an interesting question. Uh, as we, we know, uh, in China, uh, the sub-replacement for tillerty is I uh, hate debate the issue uh, in recent China, uh, Chinese society. Uh, it becomes a very serious problem uh, for the uh, prospect of uh, society and the economy of China. And the last week, a famous Chinese economist uh, said that uh, uh, the post-90s and the post-2000s uh, cannot be expected to increase the fertility rates, but the uh, post-75s and the post-80s because uh, they, have, they still have the traditional confusing concept of more children uh, will take more uh, prosperity and happiness. But uh, on the contrary, the post 19s and the post those, those do not even want to get married. Maybe uh, the society cannot have much more dependence on them to uh, have more, uh, to give birth to more children. So uh, what's your opinion about uh, uh, this, this claim? Is, is it real or what any comment, uh, Professor? You asked me <laughs> oh, yeah. or any comments or I just uh, look at the, the questions. Yeah, and the first uh, is uh, Ching Xing Mar. Yeah, just the comments. The, the sub replaced uh, fertility uh, has become a very serious problem in China. Yes, I agree. Now it's a very serious problem. Yeah, no, no questions. I. I need a few words to read in the questions uh, because they still have concept more children get married. What idea about it? Last week, uh, a Chinese economist in China said that uh, post the 90s and post uh, 
two thousands cannot be expected to increase fertility rate, but in the post seventy uh, fives and in the post eighties. Uh, because they still have the concept of more children and more happiness. And uh, the post 90s and post 2000s don't even want to get married. What is your ideas about this issue? Yeah, I, I, I agree with the, the, this um, the Professor Mar uh, talking about uh, traditional China and um, competition in labor market and also in the education is uh, more and more fierce. Uh, so now uh, younger uh, generation, uh, especially in the, in the post uh, uh, 2000s and the, two, uh, in the 90s, they, 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 they have less um, willing to uh, have children <laughs> to, uh, and uh, some of, uh, of them uh, don't want to, uh, to, to, to marry. And uh, because if they want to marry, they have to earn money to buy a house. But it's very, uh, for, for uh, young people, it's very, very difficult to buy a house in uh, uh, larger cities. Uh, usually, um, the young people uh, need the help from their parents. Uh, even the parents, their, their family is rich or middle class, uh, and the parents help uh, their children buying a house. So uh, it's good for them. But uh, uh, a lot of uh, young people from the rural areas and uh, less education and uh, they, they are low income. So they difficulty to buy a house and they even uh, have few opportunities to find an um, now, wife, <laughs> wives. Today, uh, some scholars discuss um, uh, talking about the phenomenon uh, of young people don't like to marry, work, and uh, uh, have a baby. It, it is a, a social problem in the uh, younger generation. But I, I think there is a very uh, um, uh, different, it's a larger difference between uh, um, post 80s and uh, post 90s and 2000s. Uh, just Professor Ma, uh, uh, Ma, Professor Ma said, uh, for the post 80s uh, today, they usually they they have a stable um, job and uh, stable income and uh, already uh, have a stable marriage and uh, work hard. <laughs> Uh, so they uh, have the house. Some of post uh, 70s and 80s, uh, they like one to more children. Uh, but uh, the younger uh, generation, they, they don't. So there is a, a problem for the sustainable uh, of the Chinese uh, economic growth. That is a big question. Yeah. Okay, uh, I read a second is uh, from uh, Professor Zakik. I, I think that, I, I, I don't know. Uh, the questions is, uh, uh, Professor Lee, you said that uh, the bad skills of younger generation, uh, strict uh, hierarchy in companies is not so uh, strict anymore. Is uh, this the case both in state-owned com uh, companies and the private, uh, or uh, just in private companies? Uh, if this uh, uh, happening in state uh, companies, how did it affect work culture within uh, the uh, those companies. It, it's very interesting uh, <laughs> questions and. Uh, um, Yes, I uh, I think the, the change, uh, more change, uh, happened in the private sector, private companies. So now today's uh, the, uh, private uh, uh, companies uh, like to uh, hire the younger uh, uh, and uh, the workers, 
uh, and uh, fire and the, and the, the old workers, not very old, just uh, over uh, 45 uh, workers uh, let go home. <laughs> Uh, but uh, in the state uh, uh, sector, uh, state uh, in the public uh, sectors, uh, uh, still have changed, but uh, it's less. Uh, but uh, uh, in, uh, in the same trend, uh, same trend. For example, in CAS, <laughs> in CAS, uh, uh, when uh, in nineteen eighties and the nineteen nineties, I uh, just. Uh, 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 enter in uh, my institute. The uh, senior hierarchy, the hierarchy is very uh, restrict. But uh, today's uh, more and more uh, young uh, researchers uh, with uh, higher uh, education, higher professional uh, knowledge. Uh, enter the, uh, the research institute. Uh, so younger and old, I think is more uh, equal position. Uh, it's a, a competition a, a more equally. So I think uh, the, this trend uh, happened uh, uh, both in private sector and public sector. Yeah, that is uh, questions. And uh, the third question is from the, Professor Chen, uh, Professor Chen, and uh, the question is: uh, uh, You mentioned the change of parent-children uh, uh, relationship. I would like to know if uh, women's sense of independence has any uh, effect uh, on marriage rate and uh, children. Uh, birth rate, uh, great, yes, uh, uh, true, yeah, yes. Uh, the low, uh, uh, low fertility rate, uh, uh, most uh, partly uh, because of uh, uh, today's, uh, especially young women have uh, more independence. They want to work up to off the, uh, the home and they uh, want to um, uh, pursue a uh, career uh, a successful uh, and uh, uh, not, uh, uh, not uh, just only the, the women from the urban family uh, and the high education, also the uh, women from the rural areas, uh, they, they, they like to work in uh, cities and uh, 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 and uh, migrant from their uh, village home to uh, larger cities. So this um, uh, resulted in uh, uh, marriage, in a divorce, <laughs> more uh, divorce voice and uh, uh, in a, in a lower uh, fertility rate. Yes, it, it is true. And the last uh, question is from uh, Professor Izater. Izater, um, the question is, uh, would you like to ask her your opinion when a post-2000 be able to change the uh, uh, constraints of Chinese society? Uh, what uh, generation of post-80s uh, could go uh, could not uh, come over, for example, in the social gap between the rural and the urban youth. For the trend, uh, the, the main trend uh, is the less and the less um, the, uh, influence of the hukou system uh, that resulted in the uh, rural and the urban uh, the division. Uh, but, uh, this system have a uh, very, very uh, long-term and uh, uh, deep in impact. Uh, even today, for the uh, 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 post-2000s, uh, 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 the, the inequality between uh, urban and rural uh, family background is also prominent. So that is... Um, uh, it's a difficulty to solve in, uh, uh, in a, a short time. Maybe uh, more uh, need more social policies. Uh, and the government uh, pay more um, on the efforts to uh, to reduce uh, the uh, inequality between urban and rural. 
uh, uh, na, na, na Aries. Uh, thank you very much for the questions and uh, the answers from Professor Lee. Uh, okay, now uh, for the, uh, the time is running out, uh, so we have to finish this lecture. Uh, thank you very much indeed again for uh, Professor Lee uh, to deliver this uh, interesting uh, and so important uh, question uh, discussed uh, in this lecture. And uh, thank you very much again uh, for the colleagues and friends uh, for being here to, uh, to for participating to this lecture. And this year, uh, we hope to take more uh, um, lectures uh, in the Cast Scholars uh, lectures series. So uh, we hope you can uh, keep uh, attention uh, for our uh, events. So thank you again. Thanks, Professor Li. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, Dr. Chi, and uh, thank you, Professor Sao, and thank you your questions and the comments. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.